Hello and welcome to Nanox. Welcome to the RSNA 2020. My name is Ron Polyakin. I'm the CEO of Nanox. And today I will be your host in this demonstration of Nanox technology and system. Uh, we are streaming live, actually. You see here at Bloomberg. We're streaming live from the heart of Israel. And as you can see, there are many people behind me all working tediously in order to realize this vision. But this is not a local story. Actually, for years now, we've been collaborating with our teams in Japan, South Korea, United States, and of course, of course in Israel, all with the intent to bring something new to the world of radiology, to create availability and accessibility to medical imaging. Together with me, uh, I'm very happy to have two radiologists, certified radiologists from the US, that join us today to guide us through the images. Uh, so thank you very much for joining us, Dr. Yuz, Dr. Shabshin. Uh, you will take us through the images. Uh, again, thank you for coming, and maybe a word of introduction. Hi, I'm Dr. Shabshin. I'm a musculoskeletal academic radiologist for the past 20 years and even more. And I'm working in Israel at Khalid Healthcare Services and in the U.S. at Penn Medicine, Philadelphia. I've been working with uh, startup companies for the past 18 years. And I'm Dr. Michael Hughes. I'm so pleased to be here. I'm a board-certified radiologist, practicing for over 15 years. I'm a CEO of Yosarat Holdings Company, which is backed by Siemens Health & Years and other venture capital firms. And I'm also on the advisory board of Nanox. Thank you so much. OK, thank you guys for joining us. And our radiologists will join me later to actually analyze those images. And let's start the magic. So the magic actually happened here. This is our demo room. We're going to go in and outside later on. What you can see here is amazing two devices that are based on Nanoc technology. We're going to demonstrate the way they work. We're going to show you the functionality and the freedom with these two machines. But before that, I want to talk about technology. I'm a technologist. I want to tell you about the technology of Nanox that enables all of that. So you know, uh, Nanox was originated technology in Japan, and we've been working for years and years to perfect something that actually William Rentgen did many years ago, over 100 years ago. William Rentgen created the mechanism to stream electrons into an X-ray. And uh, this is RSNA, so many radiologists, you know that in order to create X-ray, you need a stream of electrons. So he's doing it in an analog, thermionic way. Namely, he's taking a filament, taking it over 1,000 degrees C, and then there is a cloud of electrons ready to move into the anode. Well, it's very workable, but a lot of challenges. What we've been focusing in in the last eight years is actually create a true alternative to William Rentgen X-ray source, one that is digital and one that can work in room temperature. And what I'm going to show you here is the basis of this revolution. Namely, it's nanotechnology implemented on a semiconductor for the first time ever, and we call it a chip. So what I'm holding here may look to you uh, small, but uh, this is a significant, significant invention. This is a MEMS chip with nanotechnology that creates a stream of electron that is controlled digitally. Under the microscope, if you look, you can see hundreds and hundreds of millions of little electron guns that can emit one electron at a time. And that's very important because if you can control the stream of electron and you can uh, independently control the MA and KV, you can actually create that. And this is Nanox X-ray tube. This is the core technology that we have. This is the first ever nanotechnology tube that can go the entire range of X-ray that can play with MAKV independency, and it's very low cost, so much low cost that you can place many of those, hence our vision to propel the universe with those light bulbs that can actually uh, give very good images as you'll see in a minute. Now, just for comparison, you need to understand that what we have here is a traditional, typical X-ray uh, thermionic source, so we have the glass, we have a rotating anode, we need to rotate it via an engine, and we put all of this in a bassin of oil, and that uh, entail a lot of limitations. So that's basically the technology that we've developed. Again, deep technology, I like to call it deep because it's over a decade of development, and it all comes down to this. And this we can make in mass production in very, very low cost. Now, the next question you ask me, okay, we got it, but can you get X-ray? And you know what? I want to try it. I want to see if this uh, little, really little, it's like a weight of an apple, uh, a tube can generate an X-ray. So please follow me, and we'll take you through a 2D X-ray modality and see if we can take a phantom of a wrist there. 
So we're going now and we see our radiologist. This is our control room. We'll uh, get there in a minute, but we're going through this x-ray uh, room and we're going uh, to meet you on the other side showing you the x-ray machine. Well, what you see here is a 2D modality of x-ray. It's very typical. You can see it in every hospital. Uh, the only big difference is that this is nanox, which means that this head here has this tube inside. And what I want to confirm or establish with you before we, uh, we, we move on is that we can actually take this phantom. This is a phantom of a wrist. We can place it on the detector, and we can actually can an X-ray can take an image that is an X-ray image. You know what? I have a better idea. I feel like making history. I'm so happy that so many people came to join us today, and I want to refer to 1895. This is the time that William Rentgen took an image of his wife. It's very iconic for an X-ray. And what I want to do now, with your permission, I want to put an apron on and actually take an image of my hand. So I need the help from one of my team. Uh, Gilly, can you help me with the apron, please? And you know what? Let's uh, take away this, uh, this phantom. We don't need it. We'll take uh, my hand. So now I'm going, to put, uh, uh, I'm going to put this apron that is supposed to protect me from the radiation. Oops. OK. And uh, with that, now I'm protected. Uh, I will sit and I will try uh, to ask uh, Gilly to take an image of my hand. So uh, can you hit the button, Gilly? OK, we're done. So uh, now we took an extra image of my hand. I don't know how it's going to come uh, out. I, uh, this is a true real life uh, demo. So I have no idea if it even took the image. I, I heard the beep. And now I'm going to go out, and my team is going to help me to get out these 25 kilos of uh, Epron. Thank you very much. As you can see, I keep holding this technology. This is very precious technology. So what is happening now from the X-ray room, the images are being uploaded to our system. It's taking a bit of a time. And when it comes up, I will simply ask our audiologists to confirm very, very simple thing. I will ask them if they get the image and if this image is acceptable to them compared to other analog images. So it will take a bit of time. In the meantime, actually, you can watch uh, beyond this glass, and you can see uh, this, beautiful, uh, uh, this beautiful machine. And uh, here I see that, uh, uh, actually, I see my hand. As you can see, my wrist is very noticeable. And uh, as you can see, I'm still married. OK, 28 years yesterday. So I'm still keeping this uh, uh, we uh, the wedding ring. And I will end it to you, a radiologist, just to tell me if what you see First is all, acceptable. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you very much. Anniversary. We forgot to take your bracelet off. <laughs> nice jewelry. <laughs> oh, my okay, so nice. actually, this is um, a great quality. Um, we see the joints, the cortex, the bony trabecula, small details. Um, yeah, it's, it's as, at least as good as, as the ones I'm used to seeing in my daily practice. Um, Skin folds and fat planes. I can play no, with the I couldn't tell the difference from a, from a, can you window a little bit? Sure. I couldn't tell the difference from a analog uh, technology. Uh, this is quite impressive. We can even see the button of your <laughs> jacket. <laughs> okay. Good, good contrast between bony and soft tissues, for sure. I like Okay, that. anything to say about the K, uh, KVMA? That you oh. want to tell me? Yeah, this was done. I just want to confirm that it was done, as we spoke before, with a KVP of 40 yeah. and mass of 1.5, exactly. right? And typically, the actions are done at a KVP of 50 to 60 and MA of uh, five, about 3, three to, to five. 5. 3 to 5. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much, Dr. Yuz, Dr. Shapchin. Uh, this, is, was, uh, this was, for me, a confirmation because we talked to you about nanotechnology. We showed the modality, and then we wanted to confirm that we can actually generate a very simple 2D X-ray. Now I want to step up the game a notch, and I ask you to follow me into the magic room, the demo room where we have Nanox, two system in. I want to explain what we did here, and I want you guys to be as impressed as uh, I am, because what we did here is very unique. So conceivably, you have two uh, machines here, uh, they look like an uh, imaging machine, very elegant. I like the design. But there are two fundamental differences. One, 
This is the first, the first machine in the world that actually works with Nanox tube. So this machine works with Nanox tube. And second, not like any other system that provides full body scanning, this one has multi-source, which means we took separate tubes and we placed here six number of tubes, here and here and here and here. And if you think about it, this uh, machine can provide huge flexibility because now, as you can see, we can actually uh, swing the patient under this gantry. We can swing the gantry and we have the freedom to take separate images, projection in different KVP, different angles, put it all together into one very comprehensive file. And that's really what we believe to become a very new breed of medical imaging that with the fact that it's so low cost, it will provide huge value. Now, for your information, these are prototypes, but subject to regulatory approval, we're going to produce these babies in thousands. And during 2021, you'll see many of those going around the world or connected to the cloud provide real value. Without uh, me getting too excited, let me actually uh, show you this in action. So what you have uh, here for you on this uh, bed, we have a wrist, we have a phantom of a chest, and actually we have a bone of a lamb that uh, we took from the butchery. And what we want to do now, I will leave the room because of the radiation, and I will ask my team to start a scan, and I want you to see the scan, how we're going to, uh, uh, how we're going about this scanning. So please follow me again, and I'm sitting now uh, next to our radiologist, and uh, what is happening, uh, Gilad, can you hit the button? I want to show you now what is happening. So this system is now moving the targets across and different projection images are being taken. And in a minute you'll see that each images are actually uploaded through our system into the uh, software here. But for now what you see is that the image is scanning and you can hear the noise, scanning different projections. By the way, different body part uh, calls from different recipes. So we optimize, we call it the Nanox, uh, Nanox uh, uh, Atlas, which is a unique recipe, and you can see as we speak, the images coming up here. So we take many, many images. Remember, we have many tubes, many angles, many KVPs, and to provide a perfect image, we're combining all of them together, and in a minute, uh, those, uh, those images will start to upload, and there again, we have the wrist, and remember, we took 2D image of my hand. Now we have something different of uh, hand. We took the chest, and we took a bone from the butchery, actually. So I'll be very, very interested to, uh, to uh, ask you, Dr. Shabshin and Dr. Hughes, why do you think that uh, uh, these type of modalities provide freedom? What do you expect to see? What are the challenges? And what will surprise you to see when the outcome will come? Ran, uh, on the regular 2D images, we have this challenge very frequently of overlapping biomass. And uh, in a 3D thermosynthesis imaging, we are able to, uh, to avoid this problem. And we will want to demonstrate you some images now. Okay, fantastic. And uh, actually, Dr. Yuz, I see that the images came. So for the audience to understand, we took images inside, upload many of them there. Our software combined it into something that our radiologists are going to review now and explain. So I will step back and get the professional to uh, explain Thank to you. me and to the audience what's going on. Okay, so... Um this is a 2D study that was performed yesterday, as you can see the date here. Um, and Michael, do you see, um, what do you think about the joints? I think it looks normal. Do you it's see a phantom, but uh, I don't see any abnormalities. Do you see anything um, that is suspicious for a fracture, a bone lesion, I erosions? Don't. And if I don't. you look carefully at this area here, also the audience, anyone that is watching us? Okay, and let's move on to the TOMO. So here, we look at the uh, great anatomic resolution. I like it. Obviously, that is missing in the 2D. Here, we're at the volar axis. Sorry, these are the live reconstructions coming um, from the chest. So let's go back to um, here, to ours. So this is the PC form. This is in the volar aspect of the hand, and we see it very sharp, but the rest of the hand is is um, really obscured. And as we move back, we see the hook of the hamate. This is an area that is prone for occult fractures. We, it's, it's much harder to see on these 2Ds. And as we move wow, on- Wow, look at this resolution. Okay. Yeah, and as we move on, I'll play with the window. Can you see anything now? Would you change can your I, report? Can I look at something? Look at this area here. 
in the carpal bones. It almost looks like erosions. What do you think, Noga? I think so too. I would, and you don't see it, don't you? I would suspect that these are erosions and I don't see these at all in this area. And I could maybe think, or one could think that this is oh, yeah. this linear lucency, lucency yeah. like a fracture. I agree. And last thing is, there may be some subtle calcifications or sclerotic lesions here in the bone, the radial styloid, and look how much nicer you can see them. Looks like this phantom uh, was a little bit abused. <laughs> Maybe. Okay, let's move on to the next case. So our next case is going to be the, sorry, the wrist. Okay, so it's just, these are the live reconstructions of the tomo. Um, this is, uh, this is a chest radiograph that was done at a hospital yesterday. Um, it was done on a regular x-ray machine. Analog, analog source. Yeah, and um, this is the tomo. Okay, let's look at the tomo for a quick second. And Could you scroll the whole thing? Yeah, I'd we'll like scroll. to see yeah. the, so, whole, the whole images. As you can see, now we are anterior. Oh, sorry. So we can see the sternum very well. There's no way to see the sternum here the joints, the manubrio sternal joint, and even, if I go even more anterior, there's this uh, sternal foramen that's like a normal variant. Look how beautiful it, oh, you I, can I see, see it. I see some there already, and, but I will come and, back to that. And, and the trabecular of the ribs. And as we move back, we can see the airways. Beautiful trachea. And the posterior most slices of the tomo show the vertebra very sharp. The spine is very sharp. And what did you want to show in this case? Well, we'd like to ask the audience if they see anything abnormal on a 2D analog x-ray. There's a few things that stand out. So maybe there are some several possible nodules. We see this round lesion here and other ones. Down here, these could be vessels or lung lesions. Maybe there's a subtle nodule here. What does audience think? I don't see anything else. So now let's move from back to front, slowly. So this large so-called nodule is actually a blood vessel. And this one is also a blood vessel. And here is this lesion. That's the maybe possible lesion I agree. that I mentioned here. It's this a true like, lesion. This real. And if we look on the other side, there wow. are two additional lesions. Wow, look at the size of this. The this mu there must be at least seven, eight millimeters, and They're you don't see big. them on. That's impressive. No, not even retrospectively. And I want to ask you if you I, see I saw more lesions. Else. I saw something else, Noga. Hold on. Let me see if it's real or not. Oh, here it is. Did you see this? This is real. This must be a four to five millimeter nodule right there. And no way, this is smaller than the vessels and there's no way you're gonna see it on a chest x-ray. You know, any of these nodules could be cancers. And we know we embedded a phantom nodule here. Like, of course. And, and, and as we move forward, there's one more lesion that is obscured by the cardiac silhouette. Can you see okay, this I'd one? I'd like to be a resident today. Can you see, see this yes. one? <laughs> I'm gonna yes, nail you. I saw you. that, here we go. Here it is. Okay. Here's, the, here's this lesion, and, and it's obscured by, by the heart. Okay, so I think we can move on to the next case. So in, the, in this case, of course, uh, there are multiple potential nodules that were not nodules, and yep. the, the nodules that we don't see, we actually see them on the tomo. Okay, so this one came out live. So this looks like a turkey, to... like a turkey leg. No, this is we not just a turkey. Thanksgiving. I thought... Thanksgiving is over. Um, and this is actually, I went to the butcher and I bought this lamp extremity and we made some cuts into it to simulate fractures. So this is I the lateral. I have to stay away from you, Noga. <laughs> this is the lateral 2D that we did at the day that we purchased it, that we bought it. And now this is the Tomo 2D. This one that was just done now. Um, can you see some fractures? Obviously, this is a I complete do. fracture because you we played be with it too much. To me, is this one. And then there's another fracture here, which you can see so much better with the Tomo. 
Um, do you see any other factors? I don't. Uh, I only see that obvious, obvious one and uh, little fracture above that, but that's it. Okay. Do you see no. anything in this area? I don't. I see some growth plate that's below, here. yes. Yeah. So let's now start scrolling through the Tomo. I don't see anything here, but I definitely see something here. This is... Is this real? This is the fracture. Oh, is There's real. no way to see this fracture in the lateral radiograph. You can definitely see it on the AP. So here we are on the left. That's why we can see this transverse line. And at this point, we're already out of it. We're going towards the right, and we're at this level here. The other nice thing is, look at the growth plate. How it's beautiful. detailed it is on the Tomo. I don't think I've ever seen in my life in practicing here. This is a the growth plate that looks study. so sharp. So this area of the growth plate can be so well appreciated, and this area on the left so much better than the um, than the 2D. I'm if impressed. We need to, if we need to summarize what we saw, we saw um, the sternum and the maneuver sternal joint. We can see the small it details. Yeah. There's no way to see it in the 2D. It's impossible. And then we saw the um, anatomical resolution, we could tell when we're anterior and when we are posterior. Um, we got a lot of information about the third dimension. We saw some false positive nodules that ended up being blood vessels, and we saw nodules in the tomo that false were yeah. not seen, not even retrospectively yeah. in the 2D. Imagine how many lives we can save with this technology, yeah. just from lung cancer. This is just one example. I, I, I am I'm speechless. This is really, really exciting. And what difference we can make on the planet. And lastly, although this was, the fracture was occult on the lateral radiographs, we can still see it on the lateral tomo. And we can we could see a lot more information, get a lot more information about the growth plate than on the two. That's the, uh, what I'm, the concept of uh, overlapping biomass. This is the perfect example. Mm. Guys, I think, uh, I think uh, this is amazing. I, I must say, first of all, thank you so much uh, for being here today. For me as an entrepreneur, I must tell you I'm so excited and I'll explain why. I mean, we've been working on technology and my vision and my passion is to connect technology to the mass. And today what we've seen so far is actually, we explained technology and we talked about nano and whatever, but when you actually uh, speak to physicians and you see your comment about what we can see and what not, and this technology, it really makes me very excited and very hopeful because I know that as a CEO of Nanox, I can place many of those around the globe and provide many, many of those images in that uh, quality. And before we move on, I just want to ask you, Michael, uh, do you have any other modalities that you have in mind that you want to share with the audience? Absolutely. Because, I'll you be... know, this technology is quite uh, flexible. So maybe... I will be pleased. Uh, Maybe you want to uh, come here and thank you so much. I will I will stand next to you because I think our audience will be quite amazed by what you have in your uh, imagination when you see Absolutely. this technology. First of all, uh, I would like to mention that I've spent a week at this facility working with Ran and many engineers. I've seen probably thousands of images by now. Uh, not only I'm convinced, but there's something that we came across by discussing with engineers. Something that I had to share with everybody. Uh, be, being the unique, not, the not its uniqueness is being multi-source technology, which means that you could have 2D, 3D, fluoroscopy, and even axial imaging all in one device. This is a still work in progress. This is a phantom simulation, noise-free data, preliminary results. We use 11 sources with axial, sagittal, and volumetric reconstruction, and we achieved one millimeter voxel resolution. You could judge for yourself. To summarize, this is exciting, uh, and I'm very emotional because I can imagine what this technology can be done to, to people throughout the world. In one machine, you can have multiple modalities, and I'm going to stop here. <laughs> Thank you very much, Dr. Yu, Dr. Shapshin, and with that, I think there is no better way to go back into where the magic is and to summarize the day, so please follow me again into our demo room where we have the two machines of Nanox waiting to be operated uh, and propelled uh, around the globe. So again, um, just I want the camera to see this uh, beautiful machine again. 
Remember, this is a core technology, this is what we've invented, and today we actually connected the dot between the technology and an actual radiologist looking at an image and attach value to that, and that's really important to us. And with that, I just want to mention that it is the technologies that enable us to create a very low cost, very accessible, very available medical imaging system that in one machine can do so many modalities. And that's only the beginning because if you go back to what Michael uh, just talked about, we are sure that when we give this technology in the hands of scientific uh, uh, people and uh, sci scientists, they will do so much with it. And we think that this is the next era of this technology, but moreover, we are here and our vision, and I mean, this is our invention, but our vision, remember, is actually to create accessibility and availability to medical imaging around the world, and I think today we established that we are way uh, in the way to go there. Thank you for everybody participating. Thank you, Michael and uh, Noga, uh, and uh, Hope will join us in this journey. Thank you.